want to talk today about um, a project I don't personally know a huge amount about, but I paired up with um, a friend who's been working on this for, for quite some time now, and we basically were like, this is really fantastic, we're going to open source it, um, try and put it out there, see what people think. Um, first, want to make a few quick plugs. Uh, Ember Up, if you haven't seen it already, it's a website I've put together with a friend of mine. We're basically covering um, Ember news, new practices, uh, information about how to get your apps updated, um, all sorts of interesting content there. So uh, if you have any requests, things to cover, I'd really like to check out some of the add-ons that Mike covered in his talk. Um, that would be interesting information. I work for a company called Zesty. We do delicious, healthy food. Um, San Francisco catering company, we use Ember a lot. If you're interested in working on Ember with me and my team, please uh, get in touch after the talk. Um, so part of the motivation of the talk, at least for me, is that uh, at Zesty we, we have a ton of data and it's a big part of what we do. Um, and of course visualizing that data is a challenge. I came up to my colleague the other day having seen this uh, really fantastic graph on the New York Times website about um, strikeouts here. You can see how like the average moves and then clicking on individual plots you see how like they've actually done. The New York Times website were kind enough to not obfuscate their code um, <laughs> but when we actually tried to come and like implement this graph ourselves uh, we ran into about, I think there's about 700 lines of this. Uh, so I know certainly when I saw this, I thought, well, you know, it's not, it's not very easy to, to um, reproduce this graph, but it's also not very easy to maintain this kind of code. Um, and the idea that you'd have to be a bit of an, I think you'd really have to be a bit of an expert in E3, uh, D3 to, to produce a graph using this kind of code, which um, I'll be interested to see if it's not actually the case. So I described this uh, problem to my friend uh, uh, Kelly Imagex. They're actually sponsoring the video production here. So thank you very much, Imagex. Um, Kelly introduced me to Spencer because you know Spencer's been working on this this library that he calls E3. Um, so it's kind of Ember D3. Uh, the the idea here is that um, besides the challenges that I just mentioned, there's also um, a lot of the questions are how you're going to get this this D3 code all hooked up in a like a, a, the Ember way of doing things that you're familiar with. So things like managing your data bindings, um, managing the way that things get rendered. Uh, so having all the component lifecycle hooks that we have already, but then also the, a lot of the new component lifecycle hooks that we're seeing come through with Ember 113, Ember 2. Um, being able to take advantage of all these things would be uh, really useful. And then actually the other big motivation that we have is being able to take advantage of the Ember add-on community. Um, so the idea here at least is that we have something that's fairly low level in a similar vein to how D3 is relatively low level. And then if you wanted to produce like some kind of visualization that builds on top of that, it would be as simple as uh, producing your own add-on and publishing that. Um, and then other people can then benefit from that code as well. So I think being able to uh, take advantage of that extensibility um, is really great. Spencer, he's in the audience today. Do grab him. He knows a lot more than me about all of this. Um, I don't think we're going to have time for questions. We want to try and move on. But um, yeah, do grab either one of us after the talk. Uh, so I want to give a quick example of uh, what a visualization would look like if you put something together in E3. Um, at the moment, it's still fairly fairly basic, but I think actually we even now uh, have all the components together where we would be able to reproduce that graph that I showed at the New York Times website. Um, so say, for instance, we have some example data that has uh, like rainfall and temperature measurements taken year by year. Um, this is the, the code that we'd have there to, to put together um, some uh, scatter plot uh, to, to, to de demonstrate this data. You'll notice that it's all put together using templates, so it's all template driven here, um, which I think should really help in terms of maintainability of, of the code, um, but also just like, visually understanding what's going on. Each of these elements here are components, so if you want to extend the, the functionality that's going on here, you just write your own component. I actually did this um, just this morning when I wanted to implement the, the radius part of this. So we've got plotted on X, we've got um, the year 
plus and y, we've got the temperature, and then the size of the, uh, the, the, the circle that we're putting onto the screen is the, the rainfall that we had measured there. So to just great, very quickly go through some of the components we've got, um, you'll notice at the top we've got the type specified here is canvas. Uh, D3, you may know, is um, only rigged up with SVG. So this is like one particular requirement that we were going for here. Being able to output to canvas is a, you know, an interop interoperability. It's, you know, it's, it's there built from the ground up. So um, it should, in principle, be fairly easy to extend this to WebGL as well equivalently. Um, and then we set up some scales here, basic linear scales. Um, it takes all the data that we've got here, for example, for, uh, for the year. And then the idea is that we, we can condense that data in so that it will fit nicely within the scale of our, of our plot. Um, and then finally, for each model that we had there in the root, we go through and render a circle. Um, so we're mapping x axis on, onto the year for that data item there. Um, Y-axis is the temperature. And then uh, the radius of the circle is the rainfall. So just something like that is fairly easy to read, fairly easy to put together in my eyes. I'm really looking forward to being able to just drop stuff like this into my applications, um, produce a plot like this. It's very basic, but um, yeah, it, g it gives you the idea of where we're, where we're going at with this, uh, with this approach. Um, so. We started off putting together rectangles, which meant that it was fairly easy to put together a plot like this. But then actually, um, similarly, it's not very difficult to do group data um, or stack data like this as well. So that was a pretty quick win. Uh, we've already seen this, the circles that you can do there. Um, and then lines are, are very easy to draw in Canvas and SVG. So we did that. Um, and then we had a go playing around with Bezier curves that didn't uh, Work so smoothly as we might have hoped, um, but then so one of the one of the points to mention here is uh, we're not trying to re-implement D3. There's some things that D3 do very well, and some things that you know maybe we want to try a fresh approach with. Uh, so this is actually a really great opportunity to take some of the smoothing uh, functionality that you see in the D3 library to um, to to put together something here. So yeah, I mean it's all JavaScript after all, right? So. Uh, some things that we have left on the to-do list, axes, you know, it's pretty basic, I guess. Um, I was kind of hoping to get that merged this morning, but never mind. Um, pie charts, easing, some animations would be really nice. I think uh, color scales will be really nice as well. So for example, uh, being able to plot temperature as blue to red on those points there as a basic example and have, you know, all the interpolation in between there. Legends. Um, it's all fairly easy stuff to put together, and I've been impressed actually so far how easy it has been. Um, but we're quite quickly getting to the point where we can put together some impressive visualizations. One thing I will mention is that there is a very mature um, library that does uh, that makes a very similar approach that's actually built on top of D3 instead of trying to build an equivalent approach. This, this is done by the, the very good guys at Netflix. I believe um, we might have Jay in the audience. Jay, do we have Jay? No, Jay. OK, cool. Yeah, anyway, Jay um, puts this together. So uh, yeah, um, I think that's, that's, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, please do come see me, uh, see Spencer. Spencer, can we have a wave? We, we've got Spencer here. Spencer's at the back here. You can't really miss him. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. <laughs>